Yanni, thanks for doing the interview. My absolute pleasure. It is like some kind of Hollywood film set here. So what's, can you tell, are you able to talk about what's going on with all the film? I can talk about it. Um, so I've got 20 episodes on a channel called Dave. Wow. So all about Yanni all about myself. Um, yeah, really, really excited. Really, really excited for this. We met in kind of like a random situation. I mean, if, if I'd have been a woman and you'd have been a man, we might have been dating or something with, you know, how it, how it all, um, how we met. So can you kind of just talk about that? So we were on a plane, uh, both coming back from Geneva. I was at the car show. I think we actually sat next to each other. Yeah. And it was that weird glance. That's a nice watch. Oh, that's <laughs> a nice watch. Oh, what do you do? And usually when someone's got a nice watch, they obviously do something interesting. Yeah. And um, I think it just went from there. Then you contacted my office and said, you want to do this? And I got one of my team to check you out and they were like, he's the real deal, do it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. I remember you telling me about your Instagram and yeah. I was just like blown away by that. You know, there aren't many people on the planet that have a million Instagram uh, followers. Can you kind of tell us, you know, maybe just how you did it or how it's got so big? Instagram is massive. Um, when I started Instagram... How, some, how long ago roughly was it? You whenever remember? it first came out, so it was out a few months, someone said to me, have you got Instagram? And I was like, no, what's that? And they're like, yeah, this was pretty much made for you. Obviously, yeah. we have cars here and I take pictures of everything. They're like, yeah. get on it. So I started on it, a few hundred followers. And then before you knew it, it was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger mm. and bigger. And because I've got a massive celeb client base, they were pushing. Right. And they kept saying, look at this guy, look at this yeah. guy, look at this guy. And then before you know it, I've got a million. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. And do you think because you've got your celebrity clients, that kind of grew it? Or do you, is it because, because, sorry to interrupt myself here, but I reckon you've done about four snaps since we've been here walking around and you seem to be really natural with the social media stuff. So was it that you're prolific and doing it a lot or that you got some big people to sort of share your profile or both? Or? I think it's both. I'm very consistent with my social media. A lot of people always ask me, how do you build a social media platform? How, how can I do it? Yeah. And I say to them, you need to post regular. You need to post daily. I'm very fortunate. Once a day or like four, I post, four times an hour? I post six, seven, eight times a day on Instagram. Really? I try and post every two to three hours. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough that downstairs, I've got loads of things to post. Other people yeah. they need to look and see, oh, what can I post, what can I find? Every day I've got something to post. Sure. And with my Snapchat, with my Instagram, with Insta videos now as well, it's made yeah. it even more key. And with things like YouTube now, they allow you to like throw up so you can throw up and go straight to YouTube. Oh, so when you do your Instagram, you can just literally move it straight to YouTube? Yes, yeah, so you can do right. an Instagram video, yeah. okay, and you can put swipe up and it will go straight to a link for your YouTube. Right. Which is massive. Yeah. And then, because I've done things like, like KSI, KSI's got 17 million subscribers. Yeah. I've done his car two, three times. Right. And he's like, check this video out, it'll get eight, nine million views. Wow. And that just puts me on a yeah, ridiculous yeah. level. Yeah, and um, do you not, not sometimes worry about that people are thinking you're posting too much or do you just not care about what they think? To be honest, it's business yeah. and it's social media. The whole idea of social media, when it first came out, is post what you're doing. And everyone yeah. used to laugh and be like, oh my God, Instagram's down. How am I going to post a picture of my food? <laughs> yeah. I don't really post much of my food, but it's yeah. always cars. It's always business related. Yeah. I've got a personal page which has got like 300,000 as well, which is yeah. like my number plate on my car. Yeah. And on there I'll post, if I'm out for dinner with friends, I'll post my kids. I'll post more of the family stuff but I'll always throw a car, a car picture. Everything is cars to yeah. me, cars, 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 and I brand everything. Right, and because they're very visual and shareable, aren't they? I mean, anyone likes a pic good picture of a good car, don't they? Everyone loves cars, and if yeah. you're a wealthy guy, and my client base is very, very high end, the first thing you buy, you buy a house. Yeah. The next thing you buy is a car, yeah. and everyone likes to personalize their own items. And because obviously I can post pictures, especially with football players, yeah. I'll do someone's car, another football player will sit and they'll be like, I've got that car. Yeah. They're gonna to wanna to do something different to outdo or outdo the other player. Sure. So it's like it becomes a battle. And it's great for me because they're just spending money at Yanomise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you able to name any of your celebrity clients? Is that? I can sit here and name drop. So who Go do you want? Then. I've Why got not? all of One Direction. Yeah. So Harry Styles, Nile, all of them, yeah. um, all of JLS, if we right. go musicians, if we go, uh, Gordon Ramsay, yeah. uh, John Terry, Didier Drogba, Bakary Sanya, Hector Bellerin, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, you name it, I've pretty much done a car for every Premiership player, mm. even First Division, Championship, musicians, yeah. Um, yeah, everyone. There must have been a time though when you weren't uh, you know, such a celebrity in the world of your business and dealing with celebrity clients and you were starting up and you had your little workshop and it was hard and all that lot. So can you go, go back that far? So if I go back, I was, I'll give you the story first of all. So my best friend is a guy called Bakary Sanya. At the time he was at Arsenal, he was at City now mm. um, and now he's, he's gonna go somewhere else. So, and, and he was a friend kind of before the... 
is he, this in the celebrity world? Well, he, he came over from France and I, I just by chance met him and we started talking. At the time I had a Lambo. Now with football players and celebrities, they've got to trust you yeah. because everyone wants to try and rip off a of celebrity or try yeah. and take their money or try and get something from them. Yeah. And me and him became friends. So he said to me, after knowing him a couple of months and his English was really, really poor, I went around his house and he said, Janny, really broken English, but I won't do the impression. <laughs> Showed him a picture online. He said, Janny, I want this exact car. So it was a Range Rover. He wanted a body kit on it. He wanted a sound system. He wanted a wrap. So I looked at it and I was like, okay, um, it's going to cost about this. You need to send me some money. So I'm thinking, send me a deposit, send me 10 grand. He sends me the full amount, about 65,000. So the money lands in my account. I look and I'm like, wow. So I call him, I'm like, back, what are you doing? He's like, oh yeah, but Yanni, you said you get me the car. I'm like, don't ever send someone that amount of money that you hardly know. Because he didn't know me. Yeah. He's like, but why? I trust you. I'm like, but you don't know me. Don't trust me. Because you will get ripped off down the line. You don't need to sign for Arsenal. Anyway, yeah. we're friends. So done his car, he takes it to the training grounds. So not many people know this story, to be fair. So he takes the training and everyone's like, wow, your car, it's amazing. We wrapped it in white. Um, and everyone's like, who done your car? And he's like, oh, this guy, Yanni. They're like, oh, someone in France, because obviously you've just signed for Arsenal. He's like, no, no, in England. They're like, what? Who is he? Mm. Anyway, I'm a massive gooner as well. And yeah. this, is, this is early days. So for me to meet celebrities and stuff, I was like a little bit gassed and excited. Yeah. My phone rings. Yanni, real deep voice. Okay, and I'm like, hello. He goes, come see me at the training ground. I'm like, who's this? He goes, William. I'm like, he goes, Gallas. Now, William Gallas, I don't know if you know about football, yeah. he's got a real deep, strong yeah, I'm voice. I'm a Liverpool fan. So. Okay, so, <laughs> Sorry, well, okay. Yeah. so he's around me, so I'm like, okay. So I'm like, William Gallas is phoning my phone, knows who I am, yeah. cool. So I turn up to the training grounds. So I'm like, oh yeah, hi, you're Yanni, come in, park in the first team car park. Okay, you can't even get into the Arsenal training ground, it's, mm. it's that street. Yeah. So I'm parking, I'm looking around, I'm like, Ferraris, Lambos, Porsches, I'm like, Wow, okay, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a child, I'm like yeah. a little kid, I want to take pictures of everything, but I'm like, let me try and keep it a little bit professional. Back comes out first and he seems like, out the come like, oh, back gives me a hug, this, that and the other. So the players start coming out, one after the other, one after the other, and obviously Gallas comes out, he's like, hi, oh, Yanni, Theo Walker, this, and oh, hi, Yanni, and I'm like, how the hell do you all know my name? Like, I'm just, a, I'm a nothing, I'm just a car guy that's, that's starting my business. So when he's like, Yanni, I need you to do my car. So I'm like, okay, at the time I had an SLR convertible, that's about £350,000. I used to do my car, so I'm like, okay, cool, go take my car now. I'm not gonna say no. I'm definitely not insured to drive that car, <laughs> but I'm taking that car, left-hand drive. So he's like, here, take the keys. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, take it, do it. I wanna go chrome, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, no problem. So he gives me the keys, I get in the car. He's like, you know how to drive? I'm like, yeah, of course I do, of course I do. Turning the key, can't start the car. I'm looking like, like Yanni, Yanni. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm like, I just wanna make sure everything's okay, William. This, and he was like, oh, okay, okay. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I'm still trying to start this car. <laughs> and I can feel myself getting red, I can feel myself getting hot. So I'm like, Yanni, in the middle. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Another 30 seconds, another 40 seconds, can't start the car. Yanni, in the middle, flip up the thing. Now, unless you've driven an SLR, you won't know. And this is like push start early days. Mm. Everyone's got push starts now, but back in the day, you have to flick up the center, then hit the start button while the ignition is turned to start the car. Mm. Anyway, so eventually I get the, start, the car started. <laughs> Off I go in this 350,000 pound SLR trying to drive it around and I'm like, wow, that I said, not insured, driving around this, anyway, so I get it back, we do the job. Mm. He wants the car delivered to the stadium before a match and I know they were playing Blackburn at the mm. time, so I'm like, okay. So as I'm driving to the stadium, they let me drive and he's got his private plate driving, I park in like where the players park. Anyway, so I watched the game from a box, the game finishes, they won, I think 5-4, I think it was. Anyway, so he comes and he's like, oh, Yanni, the car's amazing, blah, 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 so we hug, I take a picture, I used to have like a little portfolio, um, it's before Instagram days, mm. So I do the car. He drives out the stadium, and you've got to drive out where the players drive out. So I followed him out. Pictures everywhere, fans everywhere, this and the other. I think, okay, don't think nothing of it. I can't remember if it was the day after or the, the day after that. Back page, Arsenal's chrome win, and a picture of his SLR bang centre nice. wrapped in chrome. That was the start of... And it just literally went would it go like that, bang. And that was yeah. it. And literally, player after player after player started contacting me. And you've got to remember, William was at Chelsea. So not only do I get the Arsenal players, I get the French players, because mm. it was international. I get people like John Terry, Didier Drogba. And with football players, if they trust you, they will stay with you. And if you're recommended by another football player or someone that's high end, it becomes a snowball effect. Mm. So uh, one other example is JLS, Marvin Humes, had a Christmas party. I've done all of JLS's cards. They invite me, he invites me to his Christmas party. I walk in, Harry Styles and all them, Yanni, Yanni, and I'm like, you've got one direction. Mm. How the hell do you even know who I am? You need to do my car, you need to do my car. 
and again, I get Harry's n number, I get Niall's number. Before you know it, I do all of 1D's cars. Mm. Um, at the time, only three of them had licenses. So I've done all their cars, and then snowball effect. And again, yeah. if they trust you, they will work with you. And it's mm. not about money. And listen, I couldn't go and rip you off today for £10,000. But that 10 grand I've made today, and I think, oh, great, that's probably cost me 100 grand in the future mm. because they'll never work with me again. And it only takes you to piss off one player or one big customer and they will tell 10, 15 people mm. you're finished very quickly. So yeah. I'd rather make my money because it's a business, mm -hmm. but little money, but long-term business. Yeah. And to, to this day, I've still got all their phone numbers. They still contact me. I still see them. And I was known as famous amongst famous people. So back in the day, Joe Public didn't know who I was. If you're famous, you'd know who I was. So I'd go to a restaurant, Novikov in London, for example. Football player would come in, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd come give me a hug and they'd go and sit down. And I looked at the other tables and you can see everyone looking. Who's that guy? Why is everyone saying hello to that guy? We don't recognise him. Mm. And it was great. Yeah. Nowadays, obviously, with social media and with Twitter and things like that, everyone knows mm. who I am and people ask for pictures. So it is a bit yeah. weird. Do you ever get tired of that? No, because I've come from you look nothing. Like you love it. Yeah. I, I love it. I thrive on it. And because mm. I've got two young boys, I've got um, a 10, he's 10 and 7 now, going to be 11 as well. I, I know what it's like to come from nothing. I know what it's like to have fans. Mm. I am from the generation where football players, musicians, Richard Branson, they're, they're real celebrities. Mm. I don't class myself a celebrity. I class myself as someone that's got a big social media presence. Yeah. Um, and I always get a little bit embarrassed when someone says to me, oh, I, like if someone doesn't know me, and they're like, oh, can I have a picture? I'm like, you don't know who I am. They're like, yeah, yeah, but they had a picture of you. I want a picture. Mm. And someone says, what do you do? I'm like, uh, I don't know what to say. What do I say? I've got a YouTube channel with big exposure. I've got a business. That I said, I'm embarrassed to say something. But th now, this is the modern businessman though, isn't it? In terms of, you know, if the, the old business people are getting left behind, you're the modern businessman. Yeah, even with the main dealers. I speak to a lot of main dealers, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Porsche, Lamborghini, and they don't, they didn't have social media. Yeah. And I'd be like, have you got social media? No, and I'm like, you're wasting sending your cars to me. Because mm. not only, yes, we're very good. Yes, we're very busy. And I'm not the most the cheapest. I'm, I don't claim to be the cheapest. I don't want to be the cheapest. However, I will not only wrap your car, I will make your car famous. Mm. So if you're an individual and you're a young guy, 17, 18, you wrap your car in a red or a pink, your car then becomes famous. So when they drive down the street, they're like, Yanomai's wrapped that, Yanomai's wrapped that. And they're mm. like, yeah, 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 yeah. And that is why a lot of people will come to me not just because of the quality of the work, but because I will make your car famous yeah. and everyone wants to be famous. Wow. So if you were to say, what's your best source of business, your Instagram account or the referrals from all your celebrities, is there, is one kind of more prolific than the other? I would say initially it was the celebrities and the recommendation. But to be honest, that has been overtaken massively by social media. Right. I feel like Instagram was made for me. Mm. Instagram, with the pictures and, and just putting them out there and with the likes, everyone loves cars. Mm. And I love cars, I'm passionate about yeah. cars. Like when I talk about cars, I'm like, after my kids and my family, cars is, is, is what I love. Yeah. Um, so. And is that why you got into the business in the first place? Because you wanted to be around cars? Yeah, I've, I always loved cars from a kid. Listen. I've done some, I worked at Do It All. Some people are not, Do It All doesn't exist now, yeah. it's like the B&Q. Mm. I worked at Marks and Spencer's stacking shelf doing a night shift in Brent Cross f with gloves on, freezing my hands off. I've done the graft. Mm. So I wasn't born into money, I wasn't just gifted it. I've done some serious graft. I was in recruitment in the city. Um, phone shops, hairdressers, car wash, milkshake shop. I've, yeah. Honestly, I've done it all. Um, and some businesses have failed, I'm not embarrassed to say that. I've mm. lost money places, but cars is where I think I found my own. I think this is where, where I've settled and, and I really enjoy it. Mm. And even like with my staff, I try and have a good environment here. I've worked for people that I've hated them. And you know when you get that Sunday feeling? Like yeah. I used to get it at school, I hated school. I wasn't great at school and kids stay in school, but I failed at school. And it doesn't mean you can't become a success. So that Sunday feeling where I used to wake up on a Sunday and think, God, I've got school tomorrow, man, I hate it. And then mm. I had it with work. I've got work on Monday, I can't be bothered. I want my staff to think, you know what, I've got work tomorrow, but I enjoy work. It's fun, it's enjoyable, we've got a relationship. We, we love working here, and I try to, to bring that with my staff. Um, and I'm first in, last out. I'm here at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. So if yeah. I want to have a go at one of my staff and say, listen, come on, pull your weight. You, you're, not, you're not performing, you, you're, not, you're not living the company, you're not breathing the company. They can't ever say to me, well, you roll in at 12 o'clock. They can't say to me anyway, I'm the boss, mm. but... They know I'm first in, last out, and I put the graft in. So if they see I'm doing and they see I'm passionate about the company, they're going to be just as passionate. Mm. And I don't think you can buy that. Yeah. So if someone has like social media, like Instagram, and they want to get into it, but they're not really into cars, 
they're into something that isn't quite as visual. Mm. How, what, what, what tips could you give them to try and grow their accounts and their reach and their customers and their fans? First of all, they need to be consistent. And whatever they do, it doesn't matter what you're posting, you need to be consistent. People will do it for a week, two weeks, mm. and they get bored. And they think, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. You have to be consistent weeks and months and years. You have to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Whatever you're promoting, it doesn't matter whether it's cars or football or gym or food, be consistent in, uh, enjoy what you're doing. Be passionate about what you do. When I talk about cars, I'm passionate. People mm. are like, yeah, I really like that. You're not feeling it, and, and, yeah. and it comes across. Everyone says to me, oh, who does your social media? I do it all myself. Yeah. It's a full-time job. Mm. So as well as trying to run a business, and as well as filming, and as well as kids, and as well as doing the family life and the social thing, I do my Instagram. Mm. I am on it 24-7. Yeah. And honestly... What does your missus think of that? <laughs> yeah, she... I think she, she doesn't she, like she it. She Louise just laughed at Yeah, yeah. I know. They're, 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 <laughs> listen. <laughs> Girls, they'll always laugh. But I think she gets it. And I think the lifestyle that I lead is based on my social media. And yeah, I post a lot and I, I put a lot out there. Mm. There is certain things that I don't know. People are like, you put everything on there. I choose what I put out there, but it is yeah. a lot. Do you feel like it's kind of like you live in two worlds or have you just managed to merge them into one now? I've merged them into one. Um, everywhere I go, I snap. Literally, if you want to put a hit on me and kill me, you can find me. <laughs> it's, it's a bad thing to say because I snap to everything. I yeah. insta video everything. I film everything. I'm one of them guys that... My phone's always in my hand. Yeah. I've always got chargers. I've always got boosters. Every car's got a car kit. Literally, my batteries yeah. die. By 11, 12 o'clock, my batteries are dead. <laughs> it's mad. I've got two phones and they're yeah. on 24-7. So I'm not as prolific on social media as you, but I've definitely upped my game. And I was, I'll be honest, I was a bit embarrassed to stick a camera in front of my face. And not only how I might look on the camera, because I know some people who listen to me and follow me, they feel that. Also, other people watching me with a camera in my face. Are you just going to say, just get over yourself and do it? You've got to enjoy it. Yeah. And, and the camera, listen, the camera doesn't lie. If you, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, the camera will it'll expose you very, very quickly. And if you're fake, it shows. People that are doing YouTube nowadays, YouTube is great. And you've got, as I said, you've got people like KSI, Road to Shore, Deji. These are young 20, 21 year olds that are multi-millionaires that get 10, 15 million views, which yeah. averages 10, 12,000 pounds a video. Mm. You're doing three, four videos a week. You could be on 40, 50 grand a month. Yeah. That's 600 grand a year. Mm. A big banker in the city is not earning that money. And we're talking, these are 20 year old kids that are sitting in their, in their, in their, um, in their room, mm. playing a computer game or throwing it at the TV and smashing the screen. Mm. It's ridiculous, but this is the way the world has gone. Mm. And I'm lucky enough that I jumped on this early. Yeah. People that are trying to get on it now, I'm not gonna say you've missed the boat, but you've got to put in a lot harder graph now. Mm. It's not easy to get the followers, it's not easy to get the subscribers, because everyone's doing it. The market is saturated massively right. now. So what do you think the future is for social media? Because obviously you're, up, you're all over it. What's, um, you know, what, what's the future? They usually bring out more social media. So obviously Facebook, we'd say, is the biggest, and you've got Instagram, you've got Twitter. Back in the day, remember you had like MySpace and things mm. like that. I think, I think we're at there now. I don't think they're gonna bring anything else out or something right. that comes out is gonna be awesome. Yeah. But because you've got like the verification, like with the blue ticks and things, mm. it's very difficult to try and get a celebrity or someone with a big platform to move across because you've already got the exposure. Yeah. So I think social media is here to stay. Yeah. I don't think it's going anywhere. It, social media is social media. I think the next thing is social media. Mm. And I think, think there might be like more platforms, that, you know, because Snapchat's quite a recent phenomenon, isn't it, compared to say YouTube and Facebook. I mean, I guess if there are new ones, you're going to be all over them, I assume, and setting up accounts early and testing them and playing with them. Well, here's a perfect example. So Snapchat, all my platforms are Yanomize. Yeah. My platform, my name for Snapchat is Yanomize One. Right. Because someone took my Yanomai's name. Right. I tried to get Sneaky. it back. Sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to get it back. And it's not like it's a website where you can say, listen, this is my company, give it to me. Yeah. I contacted the guy. He's like, oh, my family call me Yanomai's. What? Yeah. What do you mean you're. Yanomai is a word that was made up. Do you know what? There's people pretty much for a living go and buy everyone's yeah, of course accounts they do. and domains and then try and sell them at you for a load of money. Exactly. But when he said, my yeah. family call me Yanomai's, that word is made up from customized. Yeah. How do your family call you that? I'm like, just give it. No, 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 no point. And I weren't going to beg for it. And he didn't even ask me for money. So I said, you know what? I just set the Yanomai's one. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's going to be that many things coming out. But I think with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, those are the three most powerful things now. And people are getting paid. Yeah. You are getting paid. Mm. I get, here's a good example. I get offered a lot of money to do advertisements or to do promotions. Um, there's a watch company out there. They sell watches about 30, 40 pounds. They offer me 1,500 pound a post, do four posts a month, right. okay? That's six grand. Yeah. 
A lot of people don't earn six grand a month. Mm. I don't do it. No. And do you know why I don't do it? Because you like expensive watches. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, no, yeah. no. What you just said is yeah. bang on. I don't want to brand home, association. I don't want to hone yeah. my page, yeah. and I don't want to insult my followers. Yeah. So if I go and post and say, "Oh, check this watch out. This is my new watch," yeah. they'll be like, "Yanni, don't mug us off, yeah. mate. That's a thirty pound watch. We know you <laughs> don't, don't wear a thirty pound watch. Don't take the piss out of us." Yeah. And you got to be very, very careful. I lose a lot. Of, I don't lose. I turn down a lot of money yeah. every single week, every single month, because I don't want to be associated to just any old brand. Yeah. I promote my own company, of course I do. And I'll promote my friends, my cousins, and my family. Mm. It's part of the business. And I'm fortunate enough that I'm very high up in the social media field. So if I can help my friends, I will do. Yeah. But I'm not just going to promote any old brands. No, but someday a, a watch brand you love or some brand you love might come to you with a decent... I mean, I'd Gary Vaynerchuk, who's got a big following, he just did an endorsement with K-Swiss. They must be paying him a lot of money. Dwayne Johnson did that um, joint venture with Apple with Siri. But look at, look at the brands. Though. They yeah. are... Massive blue chip, big yeah. brand. I'd love to work with one of those brands. Yeah. Like, unfortunately enough, I work with Lamborghini, I work with Ferrari, I work mm. with BMW, Bentley. So I work with all the car brands because everyone knows I'm the car guy, yeah. um, which mm. is great. And my, and my following, a lot of people think there's a lot of car people out there. And I think I am actually the biggest in social media, like Instagram as a business. Right. Um, and when my, my audience, my, my, my audience is, is young, but I've also got an old audience and people that buy cars mm. and celebrities that follow me. So not only do I have the young, I've got a real high end. So if I say, go to this customizing phones company, they will do a lot of business. Or if yeah. I say, go and if I promote something different, they will go there. So I've now got to be very, very careful what I say, because it's my name. So if I recommend something mm. and it's bad, or I've just done it for the money, I'm going to be known as that guy, yeah, he's a sellout. Yeah. So you've got to try and find the balance because money's money at the end of the day and I'm trying to provide for my kids and my family mm. but I don't just want to just be that guy that just promotes anything and there's yeah. a few people on social media that I watch their page and I'm like, every page is a promotional mm. post and I'm like, come on man, yeah. it's so obvious. Like, it's not, not everything is about money. No. They say, don't they, 10 years to build a reputation, five minutes to ruin it. And, exactly. You know, Everything you've done in the last, you said, what, 10, 10 years, years you've been going, been built all years. the goodwill into your brand. Yeah, I think, I think you're smart to be careful with who you align with. Um, now, they also say um, it takes 10 years to build an overnight success. But, um, you know, the, your, your story was great, by the way, with Bakary, Sanya, and then all the others. And it sounds like there was a point where it exploded. How long had you grafted building up your company before it, you really got momentum? I'd probably say the last four years. I think in the last four years is when... It's gone boom. Yeah, four yeah. years ago, I think I was on 26,000 or 27,000 subscribers and the only um, um, Instagram followers. And the mm. only reason I know that is because often there's like a Yanomai's fan page and he posted up a picture four years with a date and then today, and it was like 26, 27,000 with a date mm. and then it was 1 million, Ooh. which was crazy. And I was like, wow, it's in four years, I've managed to get nearly a million followers. Yeah. Um, and I think in the last four years, social media has grown and grown and grown. And the more cars we do here, we're doing a lot more cars. We're wrapping hypercars. Listen, yeah. any company can wrap a BMW or Porsche. We're wrapping McLaren P1s. We're wrapping Porsche 918s. We're wrapping Aston Martin Vulcans, two million pounds. Yeah. And that's a race car. I mean, that must, there must be a lot of technical work in that. I mean, you know, people, sometimes people think wrapping a car, just wrap the car, you know, it's an easier job. But that must be a lot of technical work taking apart a two million quid car and... It's, it's nervous, it's pressure. Yeah. And if my staff mess up, I can't say to my member of staff, that's just cost you two grand out your wages. No. I'm gonna have to pay it myself. And yeah. what people don't realize is here at Yanomize, I make sure that I have different staff for different things. So you go to the majority, I'm not gonna say all, but you go to the majority of the customers, that rapper will wrap, he'll strip the car, he'll tint the window, he'll do everything himself. I have, excuse me, I have strippers and fitters. Yeah. I have rappers, I have tinters, I have juniors, I have uh, cameramen, I have managers, I, I have different things for different different jobs and I try and keep treat it like a football team. Mm. So I try and have two positions covered, so two left backs, two right backs. Yeah. So I have like four or five rappers, I have two, three people that can tint because people go, people leave, people become ill, so you need to try and cover your positions. Mm. But I've, I've got a big team here and I've had my team around me a long, long time. Yeah. I've had issues with staff like everyone else Who does. Yeah. But owning a business, staff is probably the hardest thing. Mm. And trying to keep them, trying to keep good staff is not easy. And this is why I try and treat them very, very well. Yeah. Any other ways you keep good staff other than trying to treat them well? Um, money is not always the be on lend all. Even though they get paid very, very well, I think, I think like personal touches and stuff. Yeah. So like Nico Mark's a good example, two Filipinos. I bought them a Manny Pacquiao signed glove. Right. Yeah. Which for them, 
I could have given them 500 pounds. But mm. to get that, it's personal to them. The Filipino, Manny Pacquiao is massive, personal touch. Things like, might be one of my staff's birthdays, I want to take their missus out on the weekend. You know what, take one of my cars, mm. borrow that for the weekend. Yeah. Try and try, football games, let them go to a football match. I'm fortunate enough that, because I know so many celebrities, I can get access to anything I mm. want. I don't always go to everything. So why would I not give it to one of my staff to enjoy yeah. as, as a perk of working here? Mm. Now, people listening to the audio, they're not going to be able to see your office. Obviously, if they're watching the YouTube interview, they will. But you've got <laughs> photos of so many people and it looks like next to the photo, they've written a personal note. Do you just want to talk? Because I think that's one of the coolest things I've seen. Yeah. The reason I've done that is because there's a lot of people over the years that said, yeah, we do celebrities' cars. And they lied. Yeah. And a lot show of, me the pictures. Yeah. yeah, show me the proof. So I've got like the Irish days and I've got a big wall at the front where people have come and they've to Yanni, yeah. thanks so much, or you've done a great job, or yeah. wow, like even someone like Rupert Grint from Harry Potter, who's like behind you up there, mm. to have that gentleman come down it, that is, he's Harry Potter, he's on Harry yeah. Potter, like you understand, that's massive. Um, I've seen things on other people's websites, and I'm like, I wrapped that car, why have you got that on your website? And I'll <laughs> phone and I'm like, and I'll actually, to be honest, I haven't done this recently, but I've done this years ago, and I'd ring them up, I'm like, oh, I've seen you got that car on there, this, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we wrapped this car, I'm like, Oh, you're speaking to Yanni, by the way, from <laughs> Anna We We wrap that. Well, well, no, we didn't wrap it. And then they start back. I'm like, just, just remove it off yeah. your site, please. But this was years ago. Now, fortunate enough, I'm, I'm quite big, so... Um, yeah, but I mean, if they're imitating you, surely that's flattery, isn't it? You'd rather be imitated than imitate. Yeah, yes, but... Or does it still annoy you a bit? It still, it still grinds me a little bit. Yeah. And do you know what annoys me the most? I feel that I'm like an innovator in, in the wrapping field. And you touched on the fact of... Um, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. People see that I drive a Lambo and I've got nice cars and nice watches. People think they're gonna get a wrapping company and then they're gonna go drive yeah. a Lambo. Mm. I'm sorry, that's not the reality. Mm. Um, and what annoys me the most is that there's loads of wrap companies out there now. Brilliant, go and do your thing. But the reason you lot have all opened is because I put wrapping on the map. It might sound cocky, it might sound arrogant. Wrapping's been around long before 10 years. And what used to happen is, remember like the Sky Vans, mm. where you'd have like the football thing on the back, or the Simpsons, yeah. that was wrapping. Mm. People didn't wrap supercars or hypercars. I was the original guy that started wrapping these cars. And because we're wrapping big, big supercars, people out there think, oh, you know what? I can trust a company out there to wrap my 80,000 pound car, or my 50,000 pound car. So I've put it out there, all of my social media platforms. And that is why there's so many rap companies mm. out there now. But they don't think about that. They're like, oh, we're in competition. And they'll try and knock me down. I'm like, yeah. I'm helping you guys. Mm. There's no, there's so many cars out there. There's so much business out there. You're not gonna touch my client base. Mm. There's so many other people. Get them, but try and work with me rather than against me. Yeah. What do you think makes you different to them? I'm more hungry. Mm. I'm really, really hungry for, for business. It's not about money. I love, honestly, I love what I do. Mm. And I'm on 24 seven. I don't think anyone is committed as I am. Seven days a week, 365, I'm on it. If my yeah. phone rings at 10 o'clock at night, whether it be a football player, I give my mobile to a lot of my clients. If they ring, I'll answer that call and I will take that call, no matter what they say to me. A good example is a football player. Run out of petrol. He rang me, Yanni, I run out of petrol, blah, blah, blah. Right, where are you? I'll make arrangements to help him out, like, mm. like I'm a concierge. That's not part of my job. That's not, I'm not wrapping your car, but he'll remember that I've done that. Mm. So little things, less is more. And if you can help people out, they will remember, or I hope they remember. Mm. So do you like test your social media posts? Like do you sort of test things and see if it works, do it again? Have you got any like posts that have just gone mad and loads of views and shares? Or do uh, you just literally just get the volume out there, show everyone what you do and just let it be? I will post pretty much anything car related. Um, there's certain posts that will go viral. So we might post something that like a rose gold. So rose gold is like my signature color. Right, I, I pretty yeah. much made that. So yeah. when there's a lot of people that try to copy the rose gold, you can't the exact color because we, yeah. we made that vinyl. We made that specific color. Right. But when I done my Lambo or my Ferrari and it was rose gold, that went viral. Everyone right. was like, oh my God, this color. Who yeah. done this color? Where's it come from? Blah, blah, blah. And everyone talks about it, it. They've not yeah. seen it before. But a lot of people are like, I hate that car. I hate that colour. I don't mind that. Any exposure usually is good exposure. Yes. And whether you hate my car, so I'll post on Instagram, it's crap, you've ruined your car. Um, and and the, best, the best line that most people say, um, money can't buy taste. Okay. Oh, more <laughs> you, money than you sense. You must have had this. Oh, oh yeah. I get it all the time. And even with my customers, people will go in on my customers and I'll, I'll usually defend my customers. Yeah. Oh, money can't, this and the other. Okay, but the difference is, because my company is my name, Oh, have you seen Yanni's car? 
if you don't know who I'm, Yanni, oh, he owns Yanomise. Whether you like it or not, you're talking about me. Yeah. And you might not like it, and you might be slating me to that other person, but that other might, person might think, actually, I really like yeah. that. Yeah. They're going to be on the phone to me. Yeah. Thanks very much for the promotion, Or they mate. might not like the colour, but they might like the way it's done, or realise you can do anything because you can do these unique colours, and go and have a look at your... All of your other colours. Exactly. And, all the other colors. and pe people don't get that. Yeah. And as I said, I will get slated. On and you don't mind media. that because, you know, a lot of people don't want to put their head up, do they? Yeah. Because, it's, you know, you, you're, you're trying to make a living, like you said. You're trying to do the right thing. And some people just will, you know, hate on you for no reason. But, but you're okay with that, are you? I don't mind it. It's, to be honest, it's got better over the years with regards to how I deal with it. Because I'm, when I was a lot younger, I was fighting. I'd, I'd want to go and fight every battle. So anytime <laughs> yeah. someone comes to me, I want to go in on them. Oh, what the... Now I've just learnt to block. Yeah. Um, I block 30, 40 people a day. Right. On an so, average. So that's literally if you just think that they've got... You, you don't try and debate with them to kind of get a bit more of a noise? Sometimes I do, but then ugh, some of these people... You can't debate with them, can you? They're idiots. Some yeah. people, honestly, they're idiots. And some people will say something because they want the reaction from me. And then, honest to God, they'll You're put... just trying to leverage you. And yeah. then the minute I comment, they'll message back, Oh, Yanni, I'm the biggest fan. I just wanted you to message me. Yeah. And I'm like, really? And yeah, someone, someone said something to me on one of my comments. Was, I'll get 100 comments. 98 will be positive. Mm. But the two negative comments are the ones I go for. Of course, yeah. So someone said... Human to, nature. Exactly. That, yeah. you, go, you go for the negative. Yeah. So someone said, Yanni, can, can I say something to you? And I, and I think it was a lady. It was a few years back. And she was like, you've got all these positive comments, but you haven't messaged any of us. Why have you gone for the two negative? The people mm. that have gone against you, point. yet you didn't say, oh, thanks for the lovely comment. Yeah. And when that woman said that, I was like, do you know what? You've got a point. Why mm. am I giving them the attention when all these lovely people are fans and they're, Yanni, what a great job and I respect the way you are and I respect the way you graft and you've grown your business, you've come from nothing. Mm. So now I'll comment to them and I'll give them the love and I'll show them the respect. And that is why when I go out to Kasha, I just come back from a Kasha on the weekend, Sharnbrook. Um, I must have stood there, no word of a lie, for three hours and done pictures and signed mm. stuff. I'm not there to get paid. I'm not there for any reason but to enjoy the car show. I didn't mm. enjoy it. I literally stood there and done pictures. But I won't say no. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'll do it. But just because I enjoy it and people have come to see me. Mm. So why, why would I say no? And as I said, I've come from nothing. And yeah. I've said it before. And now you're doing a 20 series TV show. Yeah, which, which is... How did that come about? Do you have any idea how it all sort of manifested? I've been approached to a TV show for the last four or five years. I've got 10 TV shows on paper. Mm. Never happens. Like I'm a billionaire on deals that should have happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a billionaire, trust me. You know them one. This is the best deal and you think yeah. it's brilliant. You've spent it before it's even come. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And every me month, every week, someone, we're going to offer you a TV show. Let's do a pilot. Let's, okay, fine, 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 yeah. fine. Never happens. And yeah. a gentleman called Peter spoke to me about four years ago. He says, Yanni, we're going to do a TV show with you. It got right to the final stage and they're like, no, we're not feeling it at this time. All right, no problem. But we stayed in contact. And four years later, we're here. Yeah. And Peter's the one that got me the show. Mm. And it was with the lady that I had the interview four years ago that was like, it's not right for us. She's then like, no, it's right for us now. The first pilot's gone out to them and they've absolutely loved it. So I think it's going to do really, really yeah. well. I'm really excited for that. Are you able to say when it's out so all the listeners can go and check it out? I've been told it's going to come out end of January, beginning of February. So um, that's 2018. 2018. There's no confirmed dates and stuff because obviously we're still filming. We filmed nine episodes, still got another 11 to shoot. Right. Um, but it's, it's been really cool. We've got cars like the P1 on there in Rose Gold. I've got a mm. Bugani Wira, as yeah. well as like BMWs and Lambos. And we've got ladies and men and kids. So we've got a different... A different group of people that, have, that are actually in the show and where in the past all the people that wanted to do a show with me all wanted to be a base around the celebrities and I didn't want to do that because I feel like I'm using my clients yeah. and I didn't want to use and the they celebrities. they wouldn't want me to do that would they? Exactly and in the UK people don't, in America people embrace wealth and they embrace people doing well and they're like oh well done and it's amazing. Mm. In the UK people don't want other people doing well. I'm not no. saying everyone yeah. but I found that a lot. When someone's doing well they want to knock them down. Mm. Whereas abroad or in America, people really embrace that and they want you to do well. Mm. So it's a little bit difficult here. Yeah. Okay. This podcast, the interview, uh, yeah. it's called The Disruptive Entrepreneur and I love interviewing disruptive entrepreneurs. Okay. And I just feel like you are one, but I don't want to tell you what you are. Mm. What do you think a, you know, being disruptive means? Disruptive to me can mean a few things. Um, probably a good company out there to say disruptive would be Uber, 
Uber's probably disrupting. Mm. So if you think back to the black taxis, black ta you used to have to do the knowledge. It would take you years before you could become a black cab driver. Mm. Uber's come along, don't really need much. You can yeah. go there on your sat nav and you can drive around. They've messed up mm. the whole taxi, taxi field. So you had black cabs, you had Addison Lee, and now you've got Uber. They're disruptive. They're disruptive mm. to the industry. They've come out there now and they're like, we are here, we're going to change it. We don't care what has happened all these years. We're going to come in and just mess up the whole thing. And that's what they've done. Like Deliveroo, Ooh. another example. Everyone used to order delivery. It was they're always making, Indian and Chinese. They're making thousands of pounds out of me. They are. <laughs> but yeah. delivery, they'll, they'll go and take food from anywhere else. Yeah. It's about thinking outside the box and what's not the norm. Mm. Even with me in the rap industry, car wrapping, everyone, car wrapping was known. But who went out there and got the celebrities? Who went out there and got the high-end cars? Who went out there and done it all in-house? Mm. I don't outsource. So it's about being different. And I think if you're different, some people don't like difference, mm. but if you're strong enough and you keep pumping away, pumping away, eventually people will come around and be like, you know what, that actually works. Mm. You know what, I'm actually gonna go that way. And I feel sorry for people like the black cab drivers because they had to do their graph. Mm. They're on their little mopeds, doing the knowledge, and you just got Uber now that just come along. And listen, it's a great concept. I don't yeah. use Uber, I don't really get taxis, but mm. just, just that as, as, a, as a business, mm. fantastic. Look, Yana, you've been busy all day running around and, you know, I don't want to keep you too long. Is it okay if we just finish with some quick fires and then I'll let you go on your way? No problem. I'm really grateful for your time. Thank no, my you. absolute pleasure. Thank you. All right, so this is quite a fun one. Tom wrote this. Have you ever had a request from a client and you've thought, there's no way I'm doing that? That's just too outrageous. Well, I'll give you... Uh, you don't have to name them, but... Okay, a customer <laughs> wasn't English. Her initials... She wanted to put her initials on the headrests. Right. Football player's wife. So I was like, yeah, no problem. When she told me her initials, I was like, please don't let me do that. Her initials were VD. <laughs> um, I did it. I warned her. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't do it. Or I you, did do or it. you did do it. Yeah. yeah. But I said in England, that's not the best thing to have on your <laughs> yeah. headrest. I've still done it. All right, cool. Has anyone spent more than the car is worth on the customization that you do for it? Yes. Wow. James Buckley. Right. From the Inbetweeners. Yeah. He had an old school Mini. God knows what it was worth. Really, really old. Um, we done a full paint job. Yeah. We made it up to date. So we put a digital dashboard on right, it. Yeah. We put a sound system and we changed the wheels. That car must be worth, if I say a thousand pound when it turned up here, he spent a good 10, 15 grand on that car. But <laughs> it's wow. Don't get me wrong, it's wow. But yeah, it happens yeah. a few times, but he's probably the best example because he went to town on that. But right. he loved his car. Yeah. That was his baby, so he didn't care what he spent. I remember his missus was like, James, enough. Stop spending money. It's my baby. I love <laughs> no. it. I want to do it. All right. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting stat we found on you. You might not know this. You've got 50 times more followers than Theresa May, who's obviously the Prime Minister. <laughs> You've got 50 times more really? followers than the Prime Minister. So how do you feel about that? Um... <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know you can that. You start Snapchatting about that. Now, yeah, and Theresa May is yeah. not someone that I follow, to be no, honest. Okay, no. I always find it weird that I've got more followers than some football players. Because yeah. football players play, play in front of a massive audience every week. But social media is weird. Mm. And as I said, people love cars. Whether you're young, yeah. old, doesn't matter. People love cars. And the car industry brings, brings people together. Mm. So I, yeah. I, I get it. I think that's pretty cool, though. That's a, that's a, that's a feather in your cap. <laughs> Is, uh, you kind of mentioned this, but let's just ask it anyway. Um, do you have a lot of competition in the industry and how do you stand out? There's a lot of wrapping companies. I wouldn't call them competition just based on my client base and based on the quality of work. We stand out just based on the fact that we've been around a long time. We stand on for what we say and the pictures don't lie. I post on my Instagram every day, different cars of the week. Mm. Other companies will post the same car every week, every week. Right. And when someone comes in and says, but why are you more expensive? I'll always say to them, go and check out the other company first and check their setup. No disrespect to anyone. They'll have vans, they'll have normal cars. You come here, you're gonna see Ferraris and Lambert. If you've got a nice car, who are you gonna to trust to work on your car? A company mm. that works on these cars on a daily basis or a company that doesn't? Yeah. So other than the TV show, have you had any sort of unintentional benefits of your big social media following? Any cool things happen? Um, yeah. I got a speaking part in Cars 3, the wow. Disney movie. 
Uh, that that's is recent. random as anything, isn't Ra it? There was only three English people that had a speaking part. Myself, a YouTuber called Ollie White, right. and Lewis Hamilton. Wow. So I got a speaking part. They flew me out to America. They flew me to Pixar. Yeah. Um, they made me do like, um, like a f driving Route 66 yeah. with like a few YouTubers. But they gave me a speaking oh, cool. part in the movie. And at the end of the movie, it's got my name in the credits. Yeah. Maddest thing. So surreal. Um, and that's based on social media, mm. based on that I've got a good audience and they said, we want you in the show. And because I've got young kids yeah. and they know I've got they a young following. Yeah. But to say that oh, speaking part in Cars 3, thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, put me down for Cars 4. Please, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so can you let everyone know how they can follow you? You know, what, what you, I mean, well, you kind of said, I mean, it's just you animise everything, isn't yeah. it? But, you know, where, where would you like people to follow you, follow your work? So if you guys are going to follow me, everything is Yanamai. So it's Y-I-A-N-N-I-M-I-Z-E. That's on YouTube, that's Instagram, that's Twitter. If you search me, I'll come up absolutely everywhere. Yanamai's brand, everything is my slogan. So before we met, I had a um, 750 brake GTR and I got it matte black wrapped. I Did went, you? Yeah, By who? I, well, I'm not, I'm not going to do that wow. to you. But we, didn't know, we didn't know each other and you weren't as big then. But I've just had my Range Rover redone and it, it's all black. Um, except some, the, all the chrome is grey and I've had Progressive, which is my company name, put in the Range Rover letters. Nice. But I just part, came in here and parked next to a matte black Range Rover. Yeah. So I think I'll be emptying my wallet with you before I go. So <laughs> that looked great. But I look forward to that. I'll film it for YouTube, yeah, yeah. don't worry. All right, great. I just want to say, look, it's been great. I think one thing I just really feel like is clear your passion. Uh, and I think there are a lot of people trying to make a bit of money on the side, doing a side hustle, a bit of part-time income. And... They're not really asked about it, they're just selling themselves out. But I can tell you love what you do and I think that yeah. that just really comes through. And I just, um, it was great we got that chance meeting and I'm just, I'm really inspired by what you've done. Brilliant, so thank, thank you, you very so much. much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers, Jenny. Brilliant, thank, thank you guys, you. thank you.